In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, good morning to you all, as we find ourselves on this, the Sunday after Ascension. Um, I hope you received the little video I sent out for Ascension Day. It's one of the great days of the Christian year, and it's one that so often gets overlooked. I've chosen to include certain parts of the Ascension Day liturgy into today in the hope that you can feel that it's been celebrated appropriately. However, I've, um, I've also maintained uh, the readings for today, this Sunday, the Sunday after Ascension, because I think that it marks particularly a moment of transition a sort of in-between moment between the disciples seeing their Lord Jesus go and between the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost on Whitson. But more of that later. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we celebrated with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule, let us hear the story of his parting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us offer him praise worthy of his name. Let us pray that our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you know what? There have been some blessings during lockdown. Amongst those blessings have been the opportunity to spend a bit more time with family, people that you love. Um, amongst them has been the opportunity to spend a bit more time by yourself. Some of it has been the opportunity to spend a bit more time with God, to make space in your life, make a bit more time for prayer. One of the blessings during this time that I've found in my own life is that I'm completely free of FOMO. Um, because it's one of those things which can follow you around through life. FOMO, the fear of missing out. And because nothing very much is happening, because nobody's going out and doing stuff, because my friends aren't texting me to show the amazing things that they've been getting up to, I no longer have that burden of feeling that whatever I'm doing, it's not quite good enough because somebody else is doing something amazing. Lockdown is a FOMO-free zone. And the reason why I mention that is that we're in this in-between time in the story of the relationship between Christ and his disciples. You see, again, again, in our gospel passage, we heard words from Jesus before he died. This was his farewell before he died. And that was a sad and a tragic parting. But already his words are full of hope. But it wasn't a hope that his disciples could feel. It wasn't a hope that his disciples could share. And you can see this after his crucifixion. You could see this in the way that they abandon him. You can see this in the way that they panic and flee and hide. Their response is fear. Their response is shut down. After the resurrection, however, we now have another farewell. We now have Jesus ascending to be with his Father in heaven, to prepare a place for us. And this leaves the disciples in a very different place, in a very ambiguous place. It's not joyful because Christ has gone. 
And he's promised them something. He's promised them something. He's promised them the gift. He's promised them the paraclete. He's promised them the comforter to be with them. But that's going to happen at Pentecost on Whit Sunday. And we'll celebrate that then. This is a time of waiting. This is a time of prayer. And this sense of, you, you, often, you often get the, the sense that a lot of people's faith kind of ends with the ascension. Um, and that Christianity is something that, that God is doing elsewhere, that Jesus is doing elsewhere. That, 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 that Jesus is up in heaven um, and that the work of Christ has very little to do with us. But during this time, the people of God, the disciples, are sitting and they are waiting. They are waiting in prayer. They're waiting in prayer for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because what Christ's promise that we hear him make means is that we're not going it alone. We're not left behind. We're not missing out. The work of Christ is not going on somewhere else. Everything is not taking place without us. Be sure, says Christ, before he's raised up into heaven. Be sure I am with you always to the end of the age. And how is he with us? Well, he's with us in the scriptures. He's with us in the sacrament that we receive and that we worship at the Eucharist. And he's with us continually in the Holy Spirit. He dwells within us, his people, uniting us binding us together as one body by his spirit. One body in the Lord Jesus Christ. One body acting out his work. It's a body that we wound when we sin. It's a body that we wound when we show disunity. But it is the resurrected body of Christ to which we belong and in which we share. That's the gift that Christ gives to us by his death, by his resurrection, by his ascension, by his sending of the Holy Spirit. It's one motion of salvation. And this is what it means to be a Christian. It is to have received that gift to share it with one another and to be the body of Christ. As I celebrate the communion later and you hear those words, the body of Christ, know that though we are not joined by sharing in the sacrament, that that body is present because you are there united with Christ by the gift of the Holy Spirit and we can express that unity again when we meet once more at the Lord's table. Amen. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the Church, your broken body in the world. Lord, hear us. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned on the right hand of the Majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your just and gentle rule. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. 
Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God. Pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection. Surround with your saints and angels, those who have died trusting your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe, pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Please do that. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great high priest, who has entered once and for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who's gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving Spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. 
For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Nicholas and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, whose Son, Jesus Christ, sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. So confirm us in this mission that our lives may show forth the good news which we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, it's been a joy once more gathering with you all again in spirit. I feel particularly today as we await the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost that we feel particularly united by prayer, particularly united by the presence of Christ who's promised to be with us always. And I look forward especially to the day when we can gather here again and this, in this place, knowing ourselves to be surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Until then, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy one another, and be certain of God's abiding love and presence with you. Let me send you on, a way, on your way with a blessing. May the Spirit, who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost, bring the whole world alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.